Hello everyone, I am back again and wow, what an adventure I've got to tell you all about Wild Wolves and also, not with the camera you'd expect, stay tuned. Alright, Wild Wolves, let's do that first, you'll have to watch to the end to learn about the camera bit, but all of these pictures are taken with the Sony A1 and the 200 to 600. Now the previous best wolf image I'd ever taken was this one. I love taking wolves as they should be seen, shy creatures on the edges of light. Um, you know, the wolf is much maligned and always been persecuted by man. And I want to celebrate the life of this amazing canid because it is truly a spectacular species. And for me, it's one of the target species of my life. So last week, when I had these encounters with wild wolves, it was amazing. So as always, I'll count them my fifth to my favourite one. So let's start here with number five. Wow, look at that lovely composition there, looking into the dark light. Uh, it's on the edge of the shadows, and so the, the trees have put a shadow behind. Beautiful coloration on this wolf as well. Um, look at that lovely sandy colour, it's amazing. Really gorgeous quality, and this is the kind of picture that I love to take. I love to take these atmospherics. In fact, I live to take atmospherics. And when you take pictures, you must take pictures in your own style, okay? Don't copy anyone else's. Find your own style. If you want to photograph an animal's foot or an ear or a nose or a backside, that's up to you. That's your style. You stick with it and you enjoy it. And this kind of backlit, hard light kind of atmospheric is the style that I love to shoot in. The problem with wolves is that they don't do a lot because they know that we're watching them, okay? They're quite shy animals, in fact, they're very shy animals. So when you get the chance to do a bit of action, you've got to take it. And I had the split second choice here to shoot it at high shutter speed, high ISO, or to bring it right down and blur the motion, which I did. Um, there's a fine line between blurring and creating art and blurring and being recognisable. I think this one is on the line of being recognisable. It's a fifteenth of a second. I've tilted it a bit when I shot it, which is what I learned from Formula One colleagues who tilt a lot of their pictures to show added dynamism. I mean, their pictures are just incredible. I'd love the chance to do that one time. Um, but I love this picture of the wolf going across. As Again, I've shot it quite wide. I haven't zoomed right into it. I love using a zoom, in my opinion. As you're going to hear on a future video, a zoom is the most vital tool for wildlife photography. I, you know, a fixed lens is great, uh, but if you want to be the king, queen, or whatever of composition, then you need to use a zoom lens for wildlife photography. Anyway, I like this. Nice and blurred. 15th of a second. Boom, 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 boom. Panning nice and smooth to get that winner. Number four. Number three, nice portrait. I'm looking at the laptop in case you think I'm just gazing off into the, the distance over here. Um, nice portrait here. Paw coming forward, so it's showing positive motion. All these little things in a picture elevate pictures from just standard record shots to something slightly different. And it could be an ear, it could be an expression, it could be a wink, it could be one eye at a strange angle, whatever. It, you probably don't like it when I do that. Um, Whatever it is, it elevates the picture from being just a straight shot to something extra. So when you're editing, have a good look. Don't rush your idea. I hate these people who say, oh, I've got to get my picture up to Instagoggle. I've got to get it up there quickly. Nobody cares, okay? Take time to edit your pictures, okay? Make sure that you pick the right one and pick something with a little bit different. I love this. I love the light on this. I mean, I was obsessed with this wolf. It was the most amazing colour. I mean, this sandy colour is absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, attentive eyes, lovely snout, detail right across the board. And because I like to shoot this dark to light transition, I'm looking for it. So when the wolf is going in the darkness, I'm looking for the stripes of light that are caused by the trees behind, and I'm waiting for the wolf specifically to move into that area. So I'm waiting for that shot because it's in my style, and it's a style that I love. All right, carrying on that style, here's my second favorite from the shoot. Uh, a nice one, actually, a looking back shot. Looking back always works as a composition because the animal is actually looking at something. So that wolf is looking at something. Now, you'll never know what it is, and I never knew what it was because there was nothing there, but it was clearly looking at something, okay? And that really works because it triggers in your subconscious. And for me, as a, a professional, when my pictures go out to editors to buy, you know, they're looking through hundreds of wolf pictures and something like this might stop them in their tracks. They might think, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what that was looking at. And they might actually give me three and a half shekels and when they when they publish it, which would be brilliant. Uh, but as a professional wildlife photographer, that's what I do. You know, I want to publish my work and especially with wolves. I want there to be so much wolf love in the world. Wolves need our support. They don't need our persecution. We persecute wolves 
far too much around the world. These animals, they just want to be left alone and they are a vital part of any ecosystem. So we need, need to keep our wolves and show wolf love everywhere, which is what I'm doing here. So this is my second favorite. Oh, by the way, I left the strip across the top. I cropped it out and then I thought, no, I don't like that. So I left the strip across the top because I think it gave a little bit of depth to the top there. I was just scratching imaginary hair on top of my head. I think it gave a little bit more depth to the picture and it showed the sunset was in the background. So I kind of like that. All right. What's my number one of the week? It's this one. I'm learning to sing in an expressive way. No. Uh, I love the light on this. You know, it's not kind of the raking light that you've seen in the others. It's a bit softer, more intense light in some ways because the colors are more intense around. Lovely autumn color. This is the alpha, okay? So the male alpha came in, beautiful ears, beautiful look, beautiful coat, beautiful everything, pour forward, mean look as I want a wolf to be. I couldn't do anything. You know, I could have done it small in the frame of the trees. I didn't want to, okay? I'm using a new camera, first time I've ever used it, so I just wanted to make sure I got everything right and got some beautiful, beautiful shots out of it. And I think that's uh, a beautiful wolf shot, and I hope that you agree. Now, you're going to ask me, you know, you've been using OM systems. Why are you using now a Sony? Well, I'm a publishing wildlife photographer. My pictures get published all over the world, and I'm very proud to call myself a professional because they do that, okay? And for me... Over the past few years, my agents have been saying to me, come on, these Olympus pictures, they're brilliant, or OM systems. The camera is fantastic. You never hear anything negative from me. But we need a bigger file size. We need more pixels. We need a bigger image that, so we can give it to clients because clients want bigger images. So there's nothing against the OM system at all. I'm doing this for purely professional reasons to go with the system that gives me a greater file quality and a greater size. And wow, and you won't hear me ever in a million years say anything against an om systems camera me i have a different use and i have to stop ignoring that use and i have to get back to being a creative selling wildlife photographer that i was before and i have to say i've been so impressed with this combination and thanks to shout out to sony for loaning it to me um, i've loved it the, the file quality is amazing to shoot with a full frame it's a different look uh, the lens is great, you know. Um, it's not that much heavier than 15400, um, and I've enjoyed using it. In fact, I've been using it a lot since, and so you'll see some more pictures on the coming photo diaries over the next couple of weeks uh, with this camera and see my journey with it. Now, if you're interested, I'll do a separate video on my setup of it and my journey with it. It's been like an alien device in my hands because I'm used to a different system. But fair play, you know, menus are just menus. They don't take long to sort out. And it took me about 10 minutes to get the camera set up in exactly the same way that I've always shot my cameras. I have all the quick buttons on the back reprogrammed. It was very easy to do. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed. There's my favorite wolf picture again. I absolutely loved it. I hope that you've enjoyed this. Uh, positive comments below. No negatives, please. Uh, we're tired of that already. So positive comments below. I'll always answer questions. Uh, excuse me if there's a delay because uh, I'm out and about shooting. I haven't been out and about for a while because I've been recovering from an operation. Now I've given it all clear. I'm out and about with the camera as much as I can. Anyway, when it doesn't rain in the UK. <laughs> all right. Anyway, be nice to each other and I'll be back again very soon.